Uh, Alola, they look more like saber tooth tigers to me, but they're known in the Pokemon community as. I talked about my top three starters. Uh, all my top three starters through all the generations. What is first edition? What is base set? Shadow list? What does it all mean? And what does it mean when people say Watsy? <laughs> Greetings, Pokemon Masters. I'm Professor Cedar, your guide on this incredible journey through the world of Pokemon. Ready to evolve your knowledge and embark on an adventure filled with mysteries and wonder? Every episode, we'll hatch new discoveries, share unbelievable tales, and maybe even encounter a few legendary Pokémon along the way. But remember, trainers, while we dive deep into the heart of the Pokémon world, our adventures and discussions about card values, strategies, and other Pokémon phenomenon are based on opinion and meant strictly for entertainment. These are not those of the Pokémon Company or any of their subsidiaries. It's always best for you to do your own research on these topics. Useful links will always be provided in the video description to help guide you on your journey. If you find our content helpful, entertaining, or informative, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to stay up to date with our regularly posted content. If you want to make suggestions for upcoming videos or provide feedback on how the videos or the channel can improve, leave a comment. Now, with all that out of the way, let's leap into the unknown and uncover the secrets of the Pokemon world together. Pokemon Masters, welcome to lecture number two, where we talk about the generations of Pokemon. So, this is probably a lot to look at, but I'm, I'm happy to, to start at the beginning and walk you through it. And I even got a little bit of bonus content for you guys uh, near the end, where we talk about what is first edition, what is base set, shadow list, what does it all mean, and what does it mean when people say Watsy? So if you want to know that, stick through to the end, but also to help us get to the end, I've prepared a fun game for us to play. So feel free to play along or just watch and see how much the professor actually knows about Pokemon. Oh no, I'm nervous. So here are the rules of the game. Uh, as you see here, I've got the generation, the location, uh, the game colors, and also the first partners of each generation. The game is, as I go over this and talk about either fond memories I have with the generations or how little I know about the generation, um, the challenge will be how many legendaries can the professor know per generation when he says them? Are they in the right place? And did he get them all? And did he miss any? Uh, so I will be performing the, the grade on myself during post-editing production. All right, but for now, uh, let's let's begin. All right, so uh, Pokemon uh, began in 1996, and as I was saying during the last video, that there is three main aspects of Pokemon, which is the video game series, the card game series, and the animated series. And the cool thing is, is they all weave and correlate together, and the. The way that happens is through the timeline of Pokemon and the Pokemon world. So as time goes on, we get new generations, which means we're introduced to a new region. Each region has its own first partners, but and that also means we get a new TV series or animated series and a new set of video games, and it starts the generation of cards as well. Uh, typically, it's the the first interaction with the generation happens with the video game. Then we start to see the cards, and usually the animated series falls far behind that. Um, I'm not going to go into extreme detail about when we saw which part of the generation, um, but something to note is the way we discover the first partners is in the video game series, and also uh, the title of the generation is often um, announced with the video game series, as the video game series doesn't get subtitles uh, within the generation except near down here, where uh, there's some DLC downloadable content in the video games, which have those little subtitles. Um, so let's begin. Gen 1. Oh, another thing to note, I'm not going to be talking about years per generation. Just know that there's about a year and a half to three years, and it, it could vary between each generation. And typically, uh, eight sets of cards between the generations. All right. So, Generation 1 happened in Kanto. That is where 
Ash first starts his, his adventure in Pallet Town. All right. And the video games we saw during that generation was red, blue, and yellow. We know the generation as red and blue or generation one. Uh, our first partners for generation one are Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. And now for our challenge. All right. So our legendaries are Mewtwo, Zapdos, Articuno, and Moltres. So Mewtwo is the mainline legendary, which uh, you capture through completing the game. Uh, and then the three legendary birds are uh, captured after the storyline of the game. Okay. Uh, we're done. Good night. See y'all. Bye. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so this is where it gets a little bit harder. I might, I might struggle with the legendaries, but Gen 2 happens in Johto. Johto is also known as Gold and Silver. That's when we got the games Gold and Silver. Bonus, I happen to know the, the third game was called Crystal, and that's known as Gen 2.5. Uh, and our first partners in Gen 2 was Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile. All right, so now legendaries. Uh, our legendaries in Gen 2 were Ho-Oh and Lugia. Uh, one per game cartridge. And then uh, the legendaries both game cartridges had, which were post-game, uh, were uh, Enti, Suicune, and Raikou. The legendary dogs. They look more like saber-toothed tigers to me, but they're known in the Pokemon community as the legendary dogs. All right. Next we have Gen 3. Hoenn, which is Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, Trico, Torchic, and Mudkip are the first partners, and ooh, this one is challenging to me. Um, we have our mainline legendaries, which are Kyogre, or Groudon, which you catch in the, through the main storyline, and ooh, there's a big one here, it's Rayquaza! Alright, um, I know there's more um, that are that are post-game, um, I just forgive me, I, I can't think of them. Um, so, I guess those are my first X's, but we'll we'll figure it out in post editing. All right, Gen Four is Sinnoh. Sinnoh is Diamond and Pearl. Uh, Diamond and Pearl first partners are Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup. And legendaries: There's uh, Giratina, Dialga, Palkia, Arceus. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's where that's where my knowledge of the legendary stops. Uh, also, I'm trying to not mix and confuse mythicals with legendaries, which is a whole different thing. So, for example, in Johto, we had uh, Celebi, which is not a legendary, it's a mythical. So, we have Gen 5, which is the Unova region, black and white. Uh, I should state that black and white is Professor Cedar's least visited region. Um, I tend to know the the lowest amount of information about the generation, uh, but our first partners were Oshawa, Tepic, and Snivy, and our legendaries were Kyurem, Reshram, and Zekron. And I'm not exactly sure if this is a legendary or a mythical, but then there's Victini. Yeah. Oh, and then there's also uh, Caldeo, uh, Trekion, Verizion, and Cobalion. Uh, Unova. All right, Gen 6. Uh, Gen 6 is very special to Professor Cedar because Gen 6 was the timeline when Professor Cedar became a Pokemon professor. Uh, so it's a very exciting generation. It was also where I started to learn about breeding Pokemon and specializing in breeding, but also taking a, a huge liking to the trading card game. Um, lots of really fond memories playing through uh, Gen 6 in the Kalos region, the games X and Y. Um, just so sentimental to me. Um, anyways, uh, our starters were Chespin, uh, Fennekin, and Froakie. And our legendary Pokemon were Xerneas, and Wyvatol, and Zygarde. All right, so Xerneas, Wyvatol, and Zygarde. That is our Gen 6. And then uh, continuing as a professor, uh, I ended up visiting Alola. Uh, Alola, the greeting, is also the name of the region. Sun and Moon, Gen 7. Uh, we had Rowlet, Litten, and Poplio. 
I might want to add, Raul is in my top three first partners. Um, Raul, Litten, and Pop Leo. All right. So, in Alola, there was a really cool way that we achieved legendary Pokemon training. We got to have a Pokemon known as Nebby as the nickname in the animated series, but it's a Cosmog, which evolves into Cosmoan. But depending if you were playing Sun or Moon, you would either get Solgaleo or Lunala. Another legendary in the game, which happened in the in the sequel, uh, which was them starting to toy with the idea of um, downloadable content, was Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. The legendary there uh, would have been Necrozma. Uh, Necrozma, Ultra Necrozma, and it even created mutations or fusions between uh, our two legendaries. So you'd have Dusk Main Necrozma if you were playing Sun, and uh, I forget what the Lunala version fusion was. Dawnwing, you know, Dawnwing Necrozma. And since we're talking about fusions, uh, something really cool that happens in the black and white generation, which again, I visited the least, uh, but with uh, black and white, uh, we know that Kyurem would fuse with either Reshram or Zekrom to get black or white Kyurem. All right, so um, that's Gen 7, Sun and Moon. All right, Gen 8, Galar. Galar is another one of those regions which uh, Professor Cedar didn't get much time to visit. Uh, the reason being Professor Cedar didn't have a Nintendo Switch at the time. Um, but I did learn a lot about the different Pokemon through uh, continuing to participate and enjoy the trading card game. So, uh, in Galar, which is Sword and Shield, we had Grookey, Scorbunny, and Sobble. And our legendary Pokemon were Zamazenta and Zacian. Um I missed something about the Alola region, which was also very cool, and which are very, very popular legendaries. In Alola, we had something known as the Island Guardians. Uh, so, the Island Guardians were Tapu Lele, Tapu Koko, Tapu Bulu, and Tapu Fini. And they were so cool because uh, different islands within the Alola region had a different legendary, uh, which you could pursue. Quite awesome. All right, so uh, back to Galar again. Limited knowledge on that, the Galar region. Um, but I do know that in the DLC, we saw the two additional legendary Pokemon known as Urshifu, which has a rapid strike style and a single strike style. And we also had Calyrex, which has a shadow form and a frost form or ice form. Ice Rider, yeah, Ice Rider, Calyrex, and Shadow Rider, Calyrex. All right, and that brings us to present day. Present day, we are in Gen 9, Paldea, Scarlet and Violet. So the region is Paldea, and our Pokemon that we start with is Sprigatito, Fuecoco, and Quaxly. Um, I am not a fan of spoilers, so if you haven't beaten the game, plug your ears. No, I'm just kidding, because in this one, the legendary Pokemon accompanies you through your adventure and grows and gets stronger. So in Scarlet and Violet, your legendary Pokemon uh, is your companion from the beginning, so it's like your secondary starter. And if you played Violet, it is Maridon. If you played Scarlet, it's Coridon. Uh, there is additionally additional legendaries um, that we know to be... I forget all their names. They're still new to me. Um, but, uh, there's Ogre Pond. And then there's Monkey Dory. Uh, Monkey Dory and... Uh, and all these points. Fezendipity. Uh, I I can't think of the next one. And then um, yeah, I know they're animal counterparts in the real world, but I don't I don't want to spoil that part. So uh, I will just take X's on those. So here we have it, the generations. And when I talked about Rally, I talked about my top three starters. Uh, all my top three starters through all the generations uh, are grass type. And um, I would say I actually, in the number three spot, would be Rowlet. In the number two spot, which would be Bulbasaur. And newly, and I'm super passionate about this, I'm a huge fan of Sprigatito. 
Uh, I love the SAS. I love the animated series so far. Um, and I, I'm, I'm happy to have gone through this all with you. So now let's do a little bit of talking about base set. All right. So, uh, really quickly. So just for, for current knowledge, if you didn't already watch the previous video about how generations and then subsets of those generations are released with the trading card game. So for example, Scarlet and Violet base set, then Scarlet and Violet Paldea Evolved, and then Scarlet and Violet Obsidian Flames, and then Scarlet and Violet Paradox Rift, and we just went to pre-release for Scarlet and Violet Temporal Forces. All right, so each generation follows that format going backwards all the way until Gen 2. During Generation 1 and Generation 2, there was no title of no title of the generation in the set. The sets just had different names. So for example, base set, which was just Pokemon trading card game, and then fossil, jungle, rocket, several things. Uh, and that was between 1998 and 2003. And um, a big part of that era of Pokemon was Pokemon was not the company making the Pokemon trading card game. So in today's day and age, we know about something called a copyright and copyright licensing. And that's what happened. So from 1998 to 2003, Pokemon had sold the copyright licensing to Wizards of the Coast, WOTC, or W-O-T-C, WOTC. So, um, Wizards of the Coast was making the Pokemon cards from base set all the way to the set called Sky Ridge. Uh, Sky Ridge and the sets prior to it, I believe there was three of them, um, were the sets that had what was known as e-reader cards, and that went a little bit into the Hoenn region. Um, that was during the Game Boy Advance time, where we could actually swipe our Pokemon cards through the game cartridge. To unlock special uh, functionality in the game. So when it comes to Watsi cards, there's a few things to note. So base set Watsi cards, only specifically from base set. There's something known as shadowed. All right. So there's shadowed and shadowless in the base set. Uh, with the shadow, there is a little shadow on the border of the picture frame of the Pokemon on the cards. Uh, Shadowless came before Shadowed. All right. Another way, if you're more of a more of a a, a visual learner, um, you could look for that shadow. Or another signifier of this was was there four dates in the copyright licensing at the bottom of the card, or three dates? Three dates being shadowed and four dates being shadowless. Okay. And then all through all of the Wizards of the Coast generation of cards was something known as first edition. It looks like this stamp here, and you could find that stamp on the cards. What that meant is if it said first edition, it had a limited print. So if you have a first edition card, take good care of it. Look after it. It's a limited print card. It's more rare and more special. Whereas if it's unlimited, it would not have that first edition stamp and they printed more of those unlimited sets, whereas the first edition sets had a very specific number of cards that they printed and then stopped printing them and started printing the unlimited cards. So that's, uh, that's the Wizards of the Coast. Look how far we've come. And sure, the Pokemon trading card game might not have been what it is today without Wizards of the Coast, but it more likely would not have been what it is today without Pokemon Company taking the reins and bringing us all the way to Gen 9 so masterfully. Um, so I'm a big fan of the Wizards of the Coast cards. I'm also a big fan of all the generations and all of Pokemon as a whole, uh, including the newest generation and the newest Pokemon animated series. Um, and I hope this sheds some light on uh, the history of Pokemon. And that wraps up today's adventure. I hope you discovered something new and had as much fun as I did. Remember, everything we discussed today is meant to spark your curiosity and bring us together in the Pokemon community. If you enjoyed our journey, 
please like this video, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to never miss out on our upcoming adventures. Your support means the world to me and helps me bring more Pokemon mysteries to light. Don't forget to check out the description for useful links and resources. And as always, keep on training and exploring. Catch you again!